watching, waiting. Don't look. He'll see you. Don't move. What's up, you little creeps? We are back with another episode. Chandler is frolicking and having a blast over in Europe, so I'm doing this one solo. But we are joined by one of our good friends, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Justin Bryant. Uh, I'm a graphic designer, uh, lover of all things horror. So, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So first question, what sparked your interest for art? When did it start? Um and I guess what's the drive behind you continuing to do graphic design? Uh, my my mom and my dad I basically said I was like I was born holding a pencil. Uh, so like I guess I've always been like drawing or like coloring. Um, I don't know when I was growing up, you could go like to grocery stores and they'd have like coloring contests. Okay. Um, so I guess I was like young. And um, they disqualified mine because they thought like my parents colored it for me. Oh, like wow. that's I've just always been like, yeah. Um, but I was in high school and I was like, I want to go to an art school. Okay. Um, and uh, we had a graphic design school college come, and they're like, hey, this is like a job that you can have, like making art on the computer and i was like that Fair. sounds super cool um so i ended up going there and graduated um and then i've just been designing music merch for the last 12 13 years um and then past you know since uh, covid i've kind of really gotten back into just doing like horror movie posters and stuff so yeah funny enough i uh i used to draw a lot when i was little um you probably remember seeing because how old are you? Thirty-four. Okay, so you're you're technically older than me. So then you definitely know. Do you remember mm -hmm. seeing the infomercial for like the drawing packet? You had like whatever, and they had like a turtle on the back. Okay. Oh yeah. So I used to draw a ton when I was little, and I would always make these like wacky characters. I still do them all the time, just to doodle whatever, and. They called my mom, and I was probably like, I don't know, 10, 11, and they're like, hey, we're actually in the area. We'd like to stop by your house, and then they just never showed up. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> I know. So, like, in a way, like, that was so disheartening for me being so young that I kind of just, like, gave it up. Again, like, I doodle yeah. every now and then, but, like, my my Photoshop skills are bullshit. <laughs> Even though I took like three Photoshop classes in high school. Yeah. But. I don't know. I just gravitate towards it. Um, and I always had a hard time. I, for the longest time I wanted to do like comic book, like style art. And I got like the, you know, how to draw Marvel and suit, you know, all that I think kind of stuff. bodies are hard. hard. Learning the anatomy. Just, like, draw uh, a circle and then a line on both sides. I was like, that doesn't I, look like an arm. I didn't understand how to build it. And I got so frust frustrated. I was like, I'm going to focus on faces. And I wanted to do, I wanted to be a caricature artist in it. Uh, theme park so bad. Okay. So random. Um, I mean, it's but, kind of weird, though, because you're like, you're putting your own twist on someone else's yeah. character. Yep. Um, and I focused on that for a while, but then, yeah. Um, that graphic design school came through and was like, yo, you can do this kind of stuff. And, you know, they showed you like movie posters and all, you know, all this kind of like sign me up for sure. So I'm sure this is something that every graphic artist or artist has like, um, words, um, like has the same thought of, I guess. Because I'm sure you've gotten to the point where you're like, man, there's not a thing for this. Let's make it. Yeah, no. Like, it's it's so hard because I feel like you you have to surround yourself with good um, good people within the within the community as well. For because sure. you have a lot of people 
that you can point, you can take something and point to this is a ripoff of this and this and this. So yeah, there's really not, you just kind of have to find ways to put your own spin on things. Cause most likely what you're working on has already been thought of, of course, or sure. it's like if you're doing a movie poster for a movie that you love, you have to pick something like so minuscule in that movie to put on the poster. Just be like, Oh, it's an alternate. For, for example, um, I think it was like Heroes Gallery or um, there's another one um, that's really known for alternative movie posters, but they they did Texas Chainsaw. Okay. Then, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And everybody uses Leatherface and the close-up eyeball and all that, all that kind yeah. of stuff. But this one guy did the opening grave. Oh, that's sick. And it was colored like... If you've seen the film, you know exactly what it is, but it got ripped. They're like, what does this have to do with the with Texas Chainsaw? And it's like, that's so dumb. What are you talking about? And it's one of those things where it's like, it's so many, you know, it's like, it's iconic to me because that's, I've seen it so many times. Of course. Like, it's such a random detail in that movie that that's definitely never been shown on a movie poster for Texas Chainsaw. But so it makes it, um, it makes it fresh and unique and very creative. But people were like, this has nothing to do with the movie. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. Cause like, even just thinking about it now, there are so many cool alternate posters. You could literally put Franklin's wheelchair with the Sawyer house in the background. Yeah. You could have, the hitchhiker's bag with like the Polaroids laid on top. Like there's a lot of stuff you can I've do. I've seen before. the dead armadillo on the road yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, how else can you, I, th- that's what's cool too is cause I got into like doing alternative posters um, yeah. and I run into a problem. It's not really a problem, but like um, it's hard for me to like draw exactly what i'm thinking so i need images okay and for a lot of these films the same images get used for everything of course so it's really hard to make like this is a different way to use it but it's still like the same photo it's i was like that's where you jump into like those small details what can you create that's not usually used yeah because i feel like you could always use like the main icon right as the the centerpiece, but then you could layer in front of it or behind it and just add a bunch and be like, it's the same, but it's also not the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it's interesting. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen uh, that series that I started a couple weeks ago with the alternate movie posters. I did jaws mm-hmm. yesterday. Yeah. I'm always trying to find alternative posters. I think they're yeah, so no, cool. Um, because- I follow a couple people on Instagram. Like that's all they do is they that's just they, they tend to just draw alternative movie posters. And um, I've got several. I've got one for uh, for tr- Trick or Treat. I've got one for Halloween. Um, it. Um, I'm trying to think. Like there's just there's some artists that just keep putting out cool stuff. And it's like I'd much rather have that than the one sheet that everybody can have. That's what I like about Mondo. I think Mondo puts out really. <sighs> yeah. Good I'm yeah. Posters. They're so hard to get, man. Oh yeah. They're stupid limited. Like so hard to one get. of the ones that I wanted, I'll never own it. It's, I can't even think of where to find a picture of it. It's Halloween 78. And it's the long street shot with Michael on the one side. And then it's just a bunch of leaves, but the leaves are only mm-hmm. colorized. And I was like, that poster is too damn cool. But now I'm not going to pay $125. I mean, $125 for an aftermarket Mondo poster is actually yeah. not too bad. <laughs> some, some of those go of course. forever. Man, like there's so much money. <laughs> yeah. But uh, luckily I don't really collect posters. Um, I mean, I have friends that do that have like, whole bins full or they have the giant portfolios 
Um, Sean Clark, uh, his poster collection is stupid. Like I've never really? seen. Uh, yeah, Sean Clark, who, uh, uh, what's his agency? It's Hollywood. Uh, I'll, I'll put it somewhere. Um, yeah. But he's one of the big agents for most horror stars. But like he has videos on his YouTube where he just brings out portfolio after portfolio after portfolio. And he's just flipping through like 25 pages a piece. And I was like, holy shit. Holy crap. See, that's one thing is I've, I collect posters for sure, but um, I have enough that I can fit on my wall. Okay. And but then it's just kind of like, I, I don't want to have a big portfolio to like that sits in a closet. Like, yeah yeah you like, want to be able to show what you have yeah I for sure it. so it's like it's kind of one of those things like if i buy a new one it's like which one am i getting like not rid of i guess but yeah what yeah. are you replacing yeah no yeah. because i mean if i bought like a a single sheet of like shit i don't know like night of the creeps right if it's in like super nice condition i'd probably frame it but then you're also worried about like, okay, well, what if I don't frame it? How's the condition going to stay with it being in a box? Mm -hmm. Or you buy it yeah, like, poster that's got huge rips in it and you're just like, I love this poster. I don't care the condition. Yeah. So it's either you have it or you frame it and display it as is. And you're like, look, it's got rips in it. I don't care. It's an original one sheet. I own it. So whatever. yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I, I'm the psychopath that goes and gets the frames that are like 50, 60 bucks. Like, but I'm like, I spent so much. It's like a screen printed poster, man. Like <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It's for not sure. like a $5 print that you got off fucking Etsy. <laughs> yeah. Or something. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next on my list, because I don't think we've ever talked about it. What are your top five favorite horror movies? Ooh, man, that's so hard. Um, off my off the top of my head, I've got to give. Um, I love the Strangers, man. Uh, okay, so side note off that, I I did not like Pray at Night at all. See, I'm I am definitely so many people. I just made a video about it like like a few months ago or something, where people are like. Pray at Night is fantastic, and it's better than the first one. I'm like, are you insane? Not even close. The soundtrack is really good, though. I'll yeah, give that uh, I, and I think, like I think that's a great franchise to be like. It's just, it's almost for a different audience. Because, yeah. like, the first one was, like, more of a slow burn, and it's for creepy. Sure. But the, the next one is, like, there's more action. And I like, think honestly, I don't remember anything from Pray at Night but the pool scene. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think at the beginning, like some of the like the mailboxes were getting the smiley face drawn on it and stuff. But like that pool scene's sick, to be fair. Yeah. But I mean, I don't even put the second one even close to the first one for sure. Um, so I'm now, really feel... interested to see what they do with this new one. I just. I'm already going into it with like real low expectations because we didn't need a remake. No, and especially because I mean, chapter one has to be pretty much a remake of the first one. It has to be. Yeah, and then the second one is going to be Pray at Night, which isn't even that old. Yeah, I don't even. I don't know if it's going to be Pray. I mean, I guess it could. Like, because I don't. But... I don't know if they're doing like not shot for shot, but like I don't know if they're doing each movie is supposed to be the remake of said movie. I want to say I read that he, that the director said that the first one's going to be pretty close. Um, okay. And then they're doing their own thing for, for, for two and three, but interesting. You know how things, I mean, the Joker was only supposed to be a one-off movie too, but then it made a bunch of money in the studios. Like, yeah, we're, 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 we're doing a sequel. So yeah, I, I love that movie. Same. I, I don't think it needs a sequel, but <laughs> no, of course, most things don't need sequels, but granted, if there's the market for it and you can write a good story, not just make a money grab. Yeah. Sequel, like I'm here for it. Yeah. But yeah. Um, 
digress back on topic. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, there's going to be a... I would just say... It gave me some time, though. Um, I say the Strangers um, scream for sure. Like, one of the first slashers that That's I saw. First. And it's like, this is fantastic. Um, Trick or Treat. I love that movie. Um, that's another one. I'm kind of sad to hear that they're doing a sequel. I don't want them to fuck it up. <laughs> but I feel I like it. it's just weird now because Quinn Lord can't play Sam. Yeah. Because he's like 18 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So if they cool. if they make it another, would you want it to be another anthology or based on just Sam and whatever Sam's gonna do? Man, that's what the first one is so unique. Yeah. And I hadn't seen anything like it. It wasn't apparent that the stories were all taking place at the same time and, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the ending was like, oh, this movie is just so cre like so creative. Yeah. Well, compared so to other anthologies, like other anthologies, like Creepshow, uh, Body Bags, Mortuary Collection, like, and obviously that's just to name a few – but it's just like, we're in a book. Here's chapter one story. Yes. Here's chapter two story. So they're not related to each other. Yeah. Rick or Treat was just like, they're all blended. Get to the end to find out. Yeah. It it, it was super sick. So it's, it's kind of it's kind of one of those, if you do that again, I mean, because it, it's kind of like, if you do that again, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, Luckily, he's directing the sequel. Yeah, so, and I feel like if you spend this much time on de like actually developing the sequel, it'll yeah. be great. Like we were supposed to get the the short. I don't know, 2015, 2016, something like that. Mm -hmm. But we never got it. No, so I don't know if he put off writing a short to just put this in the actual movie. Because I don't know how long this has been in production. Yeah. But, I think uh, they just re recently got like the funds to actually move forward. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know how long he's had it written out. So. All right. But, so you got two more. So you got The Strangers, Scream, and Trick or Treat. Um, okay. I got to put uh, Dream Warriors on the Classic. list. For sure. Um, the fifth one, I feel like I don't have a strong five. I think the fifth, I always just kind of like depends on my day. Um, That's fair. Man. Um, I would say I loved Sinister too. Interesting. Not the oh, second, like, Sinister. Oh, okay. Um, Sinister. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that movie still holds up. Yeah. yeah like, I don't, was, don't think there will be a point in time when someone watches Sinister and then like, eh. That was another one very much like The Strangers where I watched it and yeah. I was like, whoa. That was peak Blumhouse. Yeah. Not like 20, yeah, 100%. 12 to 2015 is peak Blumhouse. And I I, I'm so glad you said that because I I'm sitting in, I'm sitting in like the theaters and I see the Blumhouse logo now. I'm just kind of like, Hit or um, miss. <laughs> right? It like, could be great. It's probably not going to be. I don't know. Um, I think even for the start of 2023, they already have like four films. Yeah. I mean, Imaginary looks cool. We'll see what they do. <sighs> Man. And then I, Night Swim is like based Night on Swim. real fears. So Dude, I'm excited. I'm not going to lie. Night Swim looks fantastic. Just from, yes. from the trailer, it looks great. Um, yeah. I hope... The, the the problem that I have with a lot of like newer Blumhouse films is like I feel like they're made for teens. It, oh yeah, that makes sense. And it's just kind of like you mean the trailers the always look great, and then it's just kind of like oh okay. That's that's my one big issue with Five Nights. Mm. I didn't dislike it, but yeah. it's, you made a movie, and I, I've talked to a lot of people about this. You made a movie based on a massive horror franchise, right? Yep. That is all about jump scares. And there's like one jump scare in that entire movie. Yep. But you had to go for your target audience 
which is like children and teens. Obviously, people of every age play Five Nights. Yeah. But you you had to get those people in the seats, people that like care about the lore, not just like, hey, I want to get scared. So I didn't enjoy it as much. I'm not gonna lie, I went into it not knowing a goddamn thing. Okay. Like my my sis, my sister kind of explained, and I knew it was a video game. I haven't played it. Okay. Um, I've now since watched like streamers. Yeah. That have and so I like know at least I hear that there's like nine games or some shit. Oh, there's a lot. The yeah. new one in the um, sewers is awesome. Really? Yeah. So, um, based on like what I knew of it, I was like, yeah, like. I don't think the movie was made for me, um, for sure. But like, I thought it was, it was great. for fans. Absolutely, yeah, that's one hundred percent. And like, now that I've seen more, like, oh, that where that's where this Easter egg was. That's what, you know. So that yeah. was su- su- super cool. As a Scream fan, I was like, this is amazing. Um, yeah. Matthew Lillard's back, and you know, the villain. He does the knife swipe, and yeah, I know. There's I always come back. I'm like, dude, do all the Scream references right now are just, and they're they're not hidden either they're in your no, they're face blatant. blatant yeah so no i feel like um night swim looks good imaginary could be hit, hit or miss um yeah. i don't know i feel like the trailer that it showed us a ton and i was like i have to see it. which blumhouse has a habit of doing i know they really they really do um i'm a i accidentally saw a new trailer for night swim and they did the same thing and i was like man just you should have left it that's what really bugged me about smile and why smile wasn't as hard hitting for me they showed the big three jump scares in the trailer except for the creature um reveal at the end yeah especially like the sister neck snap thing Mm -hmm. like i don't know why you're giving that away in the trailer that's there's there's always there's always, I feel like, one to two too many jump scares in a trailer. It's like, just give us the vibe, man. Like, Right. Yeah, because yeah. like, because my girlfriend's like that. She's like, I don't watch trailers. And I, I'm kind of getting to that point. I'd rather read a synopsis and being like, if you can grab me from a synopsis, cool. I'll check out. I movie. have gotten to the point where I will watch like the first trailer where it's more... Like, what's this movie going to be? But, like, you give me the vibe and you say, for example, you know, um, the first trailer for Imaginary was, like, not, was, like, nothing. But it was, like, from Blumhouse. Okay, cool. And then there's a doll and it's like, okay, cool. Like, sure. I'll go see that shit for sure. But a trailer where nothing happens. Like, make me wonder what that film's about. Yeah. But, like, granted, if you go to the theaters to watch movies, which is, like, the preferred experience, right, you're going to see trailers, so they're they're unavoidable. I know. And I have – do you have, like, stubs or, like, the Regal yeah, we have stubs in there? Yeah. We – our Regal caught fire, so I can't go. Oh. Yeah, it sucks. The closest one's, like, an hour, and it's like, man, I don't know if much is <laughs> – I'm not driving an hour as many times a week as I want to go to the theater. For sure. Like, um, but yeah, I mean, so we'll go all the time and we'll see the same trailers over and over and over. Yep. But, but then one day it's like, they're all changed. It's, just, it's the same movie, but they're all updated now. Mm-hmm. And the movie that I was, was like super sold on, you just showed me a minute and a half longer but the amount of scenes that you put in there, it's like, man, you already had me. Now I don't want to see it. Yeah. What movie was that for? Oh, man. Um, it's always been, been several. Um, what was that recently? Can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. like That's why like we're not a channel that posts trailers. Really, granted, I know you, I know you can get a lot of eyes on your video posting a trailer the day it drops, or like even if they put out a teaser trailer. But like, 
I tried with Terrifier 3, and I tried, because I'm like, I'm kind of going through this thing with, with the TikTok channel. Like, I was in the super just no views, like little to no views for, yeah. I'd say, like two months. Yeah, and I then, remember seeing your post about it. And then um, I had a Terrifier 3 video kind of pop off, which seems to Terrifier on my pa page. That's what gets views. I don't, I, I don't know why, um, which whatever. But um, I tried to do the whole tr the whole trailer thing because I've seen try try different things while while your views are you know down. You never know. Yeah, I've seen a course. bunch of like, trailer videos like have a lot of eyes. Like, well, what whatever I have to do to get out of this like view lull, it went yeah. nowhere. Um, the ones that were illegally recorded in the theater, those were the ones that popped off because. It's not official yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I just wasn't trying to do that to the crew. So <laughs> it, like, it is really funny. I don't. I'm gonna think I messaged you about this. So there is an account. I'm not gonna say their name. They have just short of two million followers, mm -hmm. and I think that their opinions are just really bad. But I also, because obviously I'm not saying my opinions are perfect or anything. No, I mean, but they, when they make videos. They use a lot of the um, uh, what word am I trying to say? Not clout, but like, come on, brain, do the thing. Um, okay, well, anyway, basically, he's like, Oh, well, I have a friend that secretly got me the Terrifier 3 trailer. Oh, and I was like, It's been up for four days. The official had been up for four days. You did yeah. not put a hook up and then no, wait didn't. four days to post it. That that's that's funny. Which I it's just one of those things where I feel like that's going to get people that maybe like are just like in general fans of the genre. But I feel like like if you're a like die hard like you know that the terrifier fish are dropped yeah so like that hook shouldn't get you but the amount of people that it probably does oh there's some does get granted i know tiktok and i i've talked about it a million times on our account and just in person i'm glad that like scream five scream six newer blumhouse are getting people into the genre but on tiktok especially there are a lot of gullible people that do not know that will just take the bait on everything, yeah. which, yeah. you know, like once you watch TikToks long enough, especially in your niche category, like you learn what's real and what's not. Oh yeah. And granted, like I'm, I'm going to do a prime example and everyone that's going to watch this can do this. You mean this shit? That? Don't even need to talk. I I see serious that. movies All you time. can't finish. Yep. Come on. Well, speaking of, I guess this is a good segue into my posters that went viral. Um, yes. That we want to talk talk about, about because about I used to get so upset because I was posting these posters. Um, after somebody had sent me, hey, a video went viral on TikTok. You you should get on TikTok and show. Oh, this stuff. was before you were even on the app. Yeah, I did. That's what got me on the app. Yeah. Okay. And because I remember seeing them on Instagram. Really? And it was before we followed each other and before we had met. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, these are just so fucking cool. But like, obviously. It was clearly someone who shared them from someone else, so I didn't know that you were attached to them. One hundred percent. It's been so many years now that they've been shared so many times, but yeah, um, over and over and over, like these videos would go viral using the artwork, but they weren't doing. They were just doing this. Mm hmm. Like, yep. That, that's then, it. Now you don't got to say anything. It was this. And then it would just do a slideshow of the, and I'm like, brother, I'm doing videos. Here's how I made the posters. 
Yeah. And because what like, were the newest ones you posted? You posted sorry. The and... newest ones that I've done recently? Yeah, like the past three. Because I've watched them all and they were all great. I'm just trying to remember um, which ones they were off. Oh, yeah. well, video wise, yeah, probably back was like but, sorry, but um I just did um Swister. That's it. Yeah. Did you do I Monopoly did Twister too? Huh? What? Did you do Monopoly too? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah, I thought so. Yep. Um, but I just recently recently did Twister and then I did a Hungry Hungry Hippos uh two. Poster. Okay, sick. Yep. But I took a break because um it just got old. <laughs> like, I'm sure. It just got old. Um and it got really old seeing them just shared on all these accounts and they would go viral, but like I couldn't get the videos to this day. I, I still can't. Um, yeah. And during the time um, I was seeing all these comments cause that was during COVID. Yeah. Um, and I basically didn't have a job. Um, Where everyone was on TikTok at that point too. Yeah. And I kept seeing these comments, hundreds of comments, man, if I could buy these posters, I'm like, you can like, yeah. They're on my store. I couldn't get any like eyes or traction to like my official page. Um for sure. But that that was super frustrating for sure. But uh um it's it was a really cool series, you know, twisting those board games into the horror films. Um it's not a new idea. Of course. Um, but I think like out of them, yours are probably the most iconic because you're I've seen them everywhere i same i'm i'm super surprised i haven't seen them at a convention yet Ru like matter of time i go time. and I, I i i go it's in the back of my head i'm like i'm gonna catch somebody doing it for sure uh -huh. um get that bag because my sister said that she saw somebody at like gatlinburg or something um, and they had my Hungry Hungry Hippos poster, but as a jacket. Wow. And she was like, where did you get that? And I go, oh, just somewhere online. And she was like, my brother makes those posters. And he's like, no way. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so I know they're out there for sure. And um, like, granted, I'm I'm pretty good about if I see... Someone posting someone else's content because, granted, that's what a lot of TikTok is. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's not credit anybody. Video record the content or screen record it and then repost it. Yeah. But I'm usually pretty good about being like, hey, are you actually going to credit the person who made this? But. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've kind of gotten there for a while. I don't, they haven't really made the rounds recently. Um, yeah. A few months ago. Um, I saw a video posted maybe like a month ago or something with Halloween. Um, okay. Yeah. But um, there for six months, every day it was all people just tagging me being like, here's the original guy. And I was like, man, this is crazy. But we love that though, that people actually give yeah, a shit. Um, like, hey. But I have to give, um, I'm sure you follow uh, Horror Chronicles on yes. TikTok. Yeah. She, she's great. Um, but it wasn't until she made a video um cuz some one of her followers had asked her hey have you seen these and she and she was like yeah um and she kind of went through like like a, her favorites sort of okay. i don't remember which one her favorite was but it, she showed like candyland and hungry hippos and sorry and cuz what were the, what were the original four hippos the original candyland. four was um hungry hippos shoots and ladders candyland and mousetrap that's right. Yep. Um, and I posted, once I posted those four on Facebook. Okay. And um, I don't know who, and it, it must have shared into some sort of group because within 24 hours, I had like 300,000 shares. That's crazy. And I was like, what? <laughs> I think yeah. it's, because it's like it has that nostalgic part where you're like, oh, I played these. Man, this would be really cool as a movie. Oh, look, someone made a poster 
for this. So it blends those two things together. It's crazy. Um, well, give me, let me f finish this. Um, but horror chronicles, um, made that video yeah. and from her video, I got like, I want to say like 20,000 followers. That's wild. Like just from her video that was before she had the 400,000 followers that she has now. Yeah. Um, she's built her, she's, she's killing it. Um, but just from that video, like I got so many followers and that's when the stuff really started to ramp up. I, I was getting tags and lots of things and all that, but, um, yeah, I can't get those things to go, um, by like at least views just, you know, but, um, What's funny about what you just said, um, I was just at a convention at Monster Mania in Pennsylvania. Okay. And I ran, I went and talked to Michael Levy. Um, he works with Fuzz on the Lens Productions. He was one of the producers of Terrifier and Terrifier 2. Okay. Might, might have just been Terrifier 2. I think, I, I don't remember. He was in the first Terrifier fire he gets his head cut off um but he is doing the new movie stream okay you've seen the trailers for that I um it. but i got this vibe that it was serial killers going up against each other in a competition and which is funny because there is actually a movie like that yeah but i had never seen anything like that before and that was my concept for connect four okay the the poster was all this like villain like serial killer against serial killer and the whole gimmick to to connect four was the bodies that were they would hang them up in the circles and they would connect okay. four that's sick. um but it was like this whole like killer versus killer thing um so i was like um I can't I was telling him about it and I was like I came up with, with this concept like years ago and he was like no no way <laughs> like uh super nice guy but um they get brought up a lot yeah just in various conversations so yeah there's um the movie I was referencing if you haven't seen it it's a uh, vicious fun from 2020 oh, okay vicious I fun. I yeah uh, I mean that movie rocks hmm it's, yeah, check it out. I don't think I've seen that, that one. Uh, he gets drunk at a bar and he stumbles into a room where serial killers are having their weekly meeting. And they're just like, oh, my body count is this. Oh, my body count is this. I've done this. You've done that, blah, blah, blah. And then he blends in and fakes being a serial killer. Huh. I and then is slowly it. hunted by all of them while they're Wild. all trying to outdo each other. It's a it's a shutter original. Okay. Really solid. You should check it out. Okay. Yeah. I I just got into um, Shutter probably the last couple years. Okay. Uh, I've had it since. I, I need to go back and watch. Um, I think. Huh? I have had it since 2018. Okay. Yeah. I looked into it when it first came out, and that was when they they like really there wasn't really a whole lot. Um, yeah. So I just kind of yeah, but they're great now. Um, unfortunately like they have really good originals but i feel like a lot of the time they slack with updating their library i'm sure it's hard to get the rights yeah that's yeah. probably I mean, hard because i'm sure it's very much like these streaming companies probably bid like how you know how are you gonna i don't know if that's how it works i have no yeah, idea i'm not sure um but yeah but uh, shutter school. Yeah, I, I need to. I just switched cards, so I have to reactivate my shutter. Mm. I want to say the closest I've seen to, I guess, serial killers going up against each other is probably the closest thing I've seen is uh, Rob Zombie's Thirty One. Yeah, I guess you could count that, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that movie doesn't get talked about really a whole lot see i don't really like it no you're not a fan i don't really meet many Richard people break is doomhead is great i was gonna make a video about this straight up 
the intro to 31 with him yeah is fantastic like that's an intro man like yeah, he's my favorite part of the entire film and every yes. character that richard brake ever plays is good same he's he's i just i just um i picked it up because it has really cool artwork but i got um rob's humby's uh three from hell okay um and again i hadn't seen it in so long so i i rewatched it last night and i mean again he's just great like he's he's fantastic yeah all right, so my next one on the list, which I think you can have a little bit of fun with, if you want to keep some stuff secret, you can. Um, do you have any movies that you want to design art for, and are you currently that you haven't talked about? Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I would love to do a poster for the Terrifier franchise. The, the Star one you did is so good. Yeah. Um, I really, like... I got it printed and I went and had it signed by yeah. Damien and David. Uh, David was like, this is so sick. Um, his handler. Um, and that's what you, what you yeah. call him, right? I felt weird saying it, but that's like what they're called, right? Yep. Um, uh, she was like, she kind of did a double take and she was like, where'd you get that? Because like they see the same, you know, things. And he was of like, course. he made this. And she was like, you that's that, that's wild um yeah. damien definitely was like this is you know this is cool and i, I was like i hope i didn't piss you off like <laughs> um it's it's technically a bootleg you know i, I mean like, true but it's a one of one though for sure yeah i definitely no. not selling them um but yeah i i i honestly did that just to try to like hey like I do this kind of stuff. Yeah, because I, I remember I seeing it. your video about yeah, it. Like, like, I, I made it. I'm going to take it and get it signed. Yeah. Um, I just, I think, which is like totally fair. Uh, I just think that they like that old school, like illustrative, which it fits the franchise. 100%. I just can't really do that style, but it's just like any sort of like, a, like, random steel book or you know something that you guys might need it for down the road like i got this yeah. shit unlocked dude yeah um i would say that and before all the drama yeah yeah um i i i, I was hoping to maybe do something for scream um for sure but i don't know where that's all gonna go yeah um, I, I I hate to see it too because it's like one one of my favorite franchises. Um, Granted, but, but, you an idea you can you can shoot it down real quick. Ready? Just the ghost face mask and put a question mark in his mouth because the mouth is really long. <laughs> now no one knows who it's going to be or if the movie is even going to exist. So no one knows. Uh, scream what? Uh, uh, yeah. But I saw that. Movies are starting to do that, especially horror, which I think is it fits the brand. Um, they're yeah. starting to use lesser known artists and like they're doing like these official um posters that posters that they hand out at the showings and yeah, um different things. So I'm like, that'd be kind of cool because I don't think I'll I mean you know, hard to say never, I guess, but um, to do like an official poster that's the poster for the movie. Um, I mean, granted, you never know though. No, because um, I mean, the closest you... I've gotten to is Crabs. Which have you yeah. seen Crabs? I still haven't watched it yet. I feel like you would, you specifically would <laughs> fucking love Crabs, dude. Like you, I like I like all those stupid, but like. Yes, I feel like movies. if there's anybody that I know that's gonna like sit down and like actually enjoy the movie, um, what's it streaming on? Um, I don't know. I'll watch it tonight. I don't know. I actually don't know. Um, yeah, I'll have to look I, it up. I, I think they did have streaming rights at one point. Um, but it's dude, if yeah, it's. 
80s campy comedy horror with guts and gore um love that it's got kaijus like it's it's ridiculous but it's also um obviously with it being kaijus like that is kind of animated but um yeah. all practical and okay. you love you love pra like practical suit practical robot suit like yeah. everything is like, practical i I was like, bravo, man. Like, yeah. Um, that's how I made the poster was I came up with the concept of the crab like jumping at the viewer. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Yeah, sweet. I, I don't have that. And I was like, No, like we'll have to make it. And he shot, he gave me photos of like the actual crab that they that they made. Okay. So and he like screen he just made all these shots and then I had to like bend and make it like a real life thing in Photoshop. It was super hard, but it looks so good. Um but uh yeah, so I that's having that eighties campy vibe plus practical, like come on. For sure. Right up my alley, hundred percent. Um so I wrote this question down. And I'm I'm gonna break this into two questions, which wasn't even planned till right now. Okay. Cut. Do you have a favorite horror movie poster art? Poster art. Mm. So babe, I guess let me rephrase. Do you have a favorite like horror VHS cover art? Not like a like a theatrical, like a cover art. Man. I've never thought about that before. It's, it's hard. Um, I, I guess the only one that sticks out in my head, I, it would have been the VHS cover for it. Um, but like the original artwork for Nightmare on Elm Street with her in the bed. Yeah. I'm trying to... Trying to think if I remember that one offhand. Because I know there's the other one with Nancy outside, and then like Freddy's claw is like ripping through the. Let me. Hmm. Well, no, I guess it wouldn't have been. Because that's the actual poster. Yeah. The VHS, I guess, is more of a, it's a more zoomed in shot of her in the bed with the glove. Okay. Over the top of her. I really like that one. Off the top of my head. Um, okay, so no one's going to see this but you. You're not talking about th this one, are you? Eh, that one? No. Uh-uh. Okay. But that one's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've I don't know what mine is. Like I, I know what some of my favorites are, just based on like it catches your eye right away and it's just so iconic you don't forget it. Yeah. Like Evil Dead 2 is like that. Scream is like that. Um Texas Chainsaw even. Yeah, I would say Scream's movie. up there as well. Like, the Scream is just iconic. Yeah. Um, and especially knowing how they how they made that poster is like... Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, I... That's one thing... Yeah, that blue and white face with the big eyes, like, how do you not... Yeah. Yeah, Agreed. that's... That's that's probably my my favorite, because that's yeah you can't you can't beat that. Granted, you can take the scream name off the artwork and people still know what it is. One hundred percent. You could take the scream name off and all of the cast and just have yeah that. And it's picture, yeah. fun. That's the only thing. Like, um, the only thing that I they. On Scream 5, they started to, like, update the posters. And it's like, man, this poster been, had been the same for years. Just keep it. It's fine. Yeah. 
I will say, speaking of Scream, for Scream 6, there was only one poster I really liked, and it wasn't the one they handed out at theaters. It was the subway map poster mm. that they did. Yep. That was a cool concept. Yeah, especially because they had stew on it. Yep. Yeah, man. <sighs> I know. I feel like they're going to do it now. Like they put the like they put the nods in Five Nights, one hundred percent. But my especially with what all that's going on, like they're gonna be like we have to get people in seats. So I can ask your opinion on it. I've seen a bunch of people be like, "Oh, Neb's gonna take it." I don't. I don't think she's gonna take it. I made a video about it like last week. I, I don't. I don't think she should. Yeah, and. I don't think she would at this point, which is the same thing I think with Matthew as well. Cause if yeah. they weren't thinking about doing Stu for sure. Yeah. Like I think now that's such a fan theory, a favorite fan theory that's been for years where they're, they're like, what do we got to do to kind of like fix this? And yeah get people in seats oh we're gonna pay nev her m m money that she deserves yep. bring her back but then just to lock it in we're bringing Stu back and all you have to do is you don't even have to confirm it all you have to do is like tease that in a trailer by this the smallest little thing like really just go eh, like he's coming and but I feel like right now, even if you do that, I don't know that people, a lot of, a lot of people are like boycotting this franchise. Well, that's why a lot of people are hoping that Spyglass gives up the rights. I, I feel like with the articles that I've read on like how Nev's was just a business decision we didn't need, yeah we we didn't need nev to make scream six successful so we don't need melissa or G or jenna yeah of course Brother, yeah. you went in hard on this whole whole core four thing and now you just broke it in half now you got two yeah i haven't been i haven't been like the biggest like fan of the whole core four thing um I don't I'm think they're nearly five and six. So yeah, I so like losing losing the core four to me is like whatever, dude. Um, but it's the end of the trilogy, so it's like, what are you gonna do? That's not gonna feel because now you're two movies in, and yeah. even it it'd be like it'd be like the Scream TV show season yeah. one. One and two, then it was like season three came. Well, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Which I liked it because it had the original ghost face and voice and stuff. And but like, yeah, but it was way different than what they had built. It was like we hadn't. What are we doing here? It just yeah. felt out of place um, and weird. Um, so yeah, I mean, but my point too is like that's how you get people in seats. But I don't even know if Nev and Matthew would even agree to do the film. I point. don't I don't think they would because it's just it's pity at this point. Oh, now you're gonna pay me what I'm worth mm -hmm. because you fired your two main female leads. Yeah. I mean, and man, Matthew is like the most supportive person on the of planet. Course. And I just I don't think I mean he signed on for two more five nights. He he's good to go. Yeah. Um so he doesn't really need to do it. I think he would want to for, for fans, the fans, one hundred percent. Like for like for the fans, he'd be like, "Yeah, this is like I'm going to keep my Monster Mania line going for years." Like, so for sure. how about this? You just get ahead of it, whether it gets confirmed or not. You just make a Scream Seven poster with a busted TV on it. I, dude, I, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, for sure. I've th I've thought about it for sure. Because um, like, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Just imagine a trailer like that at, at the very end, of, like in the shot, there's a bus and TV, or like oh, something yeah, like, yeah. where it's like, hey, he's you know, you're gonna have a lot of fans that are like right now being like, I want to go see it. You'll have some go, I 
I got to go see it. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if in in recent history, I mean, fandoms have really shown up or not sh- shown up. Flash didn't do well. Um, the last uh, fuck Hogwarts, uh, the Harry the Harry Potter series. Um, Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, that know, last yeah. one didn't do well. I mean, so I, I, I wouldn't put it past a fandom when they say like we're not going to go see it. Like kids now, man, they're like we ain't going to go see it. Or they get bullied the like they did for Sonic. And that's what I'm saying. Dude, the which, movie came out great. Thank you. I mean, c- c- cyberbullying at its finest, to be worse because. That original Sonic was dog shit. Oh, awful. And both the movies were good. So good. But, like, yeah, the bullying worked on the But I can't imagine watching it with the original Sonic. There's no way. There's no way. So, I don't know. I mean, I I feel like it'd be a good good business move to just sell the rights. um, Get it back to Miramax. And just just restart, basically. Be like, hey... You know, because it's not like there is kind of an ending in six. I mean, yeah, they both walk away and they both lived. Yeah. So and... like for them, it, it is unfortunate, but like that ending works. It does. Because they both it... walked away from Ghostface. They both walked away from the franchise. What's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... Man, the symbolism there, her dropping the the yeah. mask and walking away. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And it's it's sad because they're uh they're really shitty about it. But it's like now it's ended perfectly. Well, it's like but, what would you rather have? Would you rather the franchise get sold to get away from the whole spy the last thing and start over? Hopefully it'd be better. Um, or would you rather have a half-assed rewritten third film that suddenly two of the main members are just gone? Yeah, it's, it's like, weird when they have to do that because you, scream. you also have to like sometimes make up a scenario. Like you have to kill those characters off. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. But it felt very – that's going to feel very – they just like – randomly explained why Sydney wasn't there in Scream 6. It felt so she forced. Moved. It felt so forced. I was like, dude, at least make it natural. Like It was like, oh yeah, what happened to Sydney? Oh, she's moved. Oh, okay. And then I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's what I'm saying. Like, I would almost rather just not get the seventh one. And then yeah, just, I mean, at this point, wait. Like- you're going to have to do so much to save it, but it's going to feel forced. And it's going to feel just like, hey, like we we want your money. This isn't about like trying to please the fans. We want yeah. your money, so we're going to do whatever we can do to get it. But I, it's not going to end up the way they want. I it's, don't it's just so. no. Because as soon as Neb says no, you're fucked. Which I think is a very high chance. Me too. Like... I don't shit, know. If I would have, I would ask for double the money that I didn't to be get paid just, the first time. Just to be petty as fuck, dude. Yeah, for sure. Course. Like, but absolutely. I feel like at this point, they're willing to pay for it if Spyglass is going to keep the rights. Yeah. There's yeah, like, yeah I mean, you're, you're the one who's going to make money, so. Yeah. I, I don't know. We'll see. They have a big hole to climb out of. And that hole was dug, dude. Yeah. Uh, I was just scrolling. I was just, and all of a sudden, I just saw this video. I was like, well, that's not true. I was like, what are you talking about? And then within, it was like 18 hours. I was like, this franchise is just in shambles. I went on Twitter and typed M. And Melissa was the first thing trending. I was like, okay, that sucks. I had seen, and I got on Google. It happened quick too, because I got on Google and like, it said like an article was like 10 minutes ago. I was like, this shit is caught. It caught fire. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, Crazy. the one I saw was it last week. It said that she was let go months 
before they actually let her go. And that Jenna's was a salary issue. What I read was that Jenna was already talking about leaving. Okay. Because of her schedule. With when that was but all those those conversations happened pre-strike. Okay. Um, and then the strike was over. Was that was a few weeks ago though, right? Uh, we may be a month pre-strike. That's what I'm saying. I, you know, and this this just happened a couple weeks back. So yeah. um I think we were out of strike early November. Yeah, that's like late right. October. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't remember. It's been a long time. Um yeah. That strike, that strike took forever. Um, yeah, but so th- that's how, and it it feels very like this is how we're gonna spin it. Like these conversations were happening anyway. Um, we are just wrapping things up, but that just happens to come out less than twenty four hours after 100%. you let a big star like the like. I don't want to say that she wasn't the star because she was like, she is now the main character. Yeah. Jenna is right there, but like, she is, she's like, suppose like the new Sydney, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, you can't convince me that these conversations just, they were happening months ago, but we just not going to report that she, Jenna has now left as well. What happened 12 hours ago has got nothing to do with it. Yeah, it's <laughs> way like, too What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's no there's no shot. Um, because I had just read, I literally had just read an article three days before that, how Jenna's schedule had actually opened up and she was gonna be able to fit in Scream 7 if she wanted to. Okay. But I don't know how legitimate these articles are i have no idea um because unless it's posted on variety or you know rolling stone or yeah some some disgusting or you know whatever it's like that's when you know no but like all these rumors you have no idea but supposedly like all of the cliff notes of the original scream 7 script are, are out there hmm so um i haven't i haven't seen them all the only thing that I saw was like uh their their mom was gonna play a huge role for sure. Okay. And it was like her and then it was like Stu Mocker's sis, like sister or something was gonna be working with her as the new ghost face, you know, duo or something. And I was like, okay. Cause I mean like the Stu Mocker like cult thing would be cool. Which I thought I thought the original Scream 3 was supposed to be very much like yeah. that, right? But it took place in a high school or a yeah. college, right? Mm-hmm. And they had a massacre at the college, but then like Columbine had just happened and they were like, never mind. Yep. Same shit um, with idle hands. Yeah. So that's, he was originally supposed to be in three with like, he was supposed to be orchestrating that whole thing. And they were kind of yeah. like, you can't do this now, which is fair. So I feel like that's, I guess I thought that might be what scream six was. Yeah. Cause was I mean, to, I didn't expect a scream seven. I mean, I just assumed even, even judging by the ending of scream six, like, I mean, knowing how scream is, she could have dropped the mask and then you just see some random hand pick it up. Yeah. Um, Cause it has that, you know, that um, I don't want to say notoriety cause that's not the word, but it's like, that's how scream is scream can be anybody, but that's yep. what I wanted for scream seven. Had they not played around granted, if it was still going to be shot in New York, that was my big thing. Like, obviously. see, my my theory was, um, which is a big problem. I I get it for the ending that we got for Scream Six. I was kind of like, we're doing this again, but like, yeah. I get it. the 
this back trilogy is supposed to mirror the original trilogy. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. so since we're doing this, I figured they would find a way to get the movie back to Hollywood. Yeah. Since that's where Scream 3 took place. Yeah. Um, be cool. But because I thought that was unique about Scream 6 was we are in, in a different spot. Do I think they utilized New York as a character like they should have as much? No. No. I feel like they the showed was- one bodega. The bodega. I mean, great uh, scene. Great but you scene. You didn't really show New York. Yeah, the the subway, but I feel like But there's subways there's- in most big metropolitan cities. Yeah. Um, it didn't scream New York. No. No. But that's that's why it's kind of funny. What I wanted was Scream 6 to be the end, right? And it could have been, in New York, the biggest melting pot in the world. Your ghost face could be anybody, and it's the first one. Yeah. That followed you across the country. But now I don't. I don't. I don't know where they could go, especially because they have to do an entire rewrite. Yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like they they have to bring Nev, you know, to be smart that they have to bring they they have to get Nev back for sure. Yeah, um, and they have to do something with Stu Mumacher, whether that's him or. They love this whole, there's families of the families mm-hmm. that were, you know, so you could do that. But I feel like that's going to be like, yeah, of course. Um, but I, I don't know. We'll see. It's in shows, though. It's not looking good. Yeah. yeah it I sucks because I'm a huge, I'm a huge Scream fan. So. For sure. So this was the second question that I wanted to break. And it might be as it might be as hard as the first one I asked. Is there a movie that has really good cover art that is awful? Oh, I feel like a lot of movies, especially independent horror, which I hate to say, but like that's what I kind of want to be. Like straight up, like I would love to be the artist that tricks you. <laughs> like okay. the cover art looks so sick movie's ass um like i want the movie to be good but like that's a dream like like you've done your job as an artist yeah if you're scanning the shelf and you're like that looks sick and then you take it home and you're you're like damn um man there was one with what was it um i think i had a clown you think it had because I'm trying to think of all the clown films that I've ever seen. It was like, man, it was. I found it in a in Red Box. That was like when when Red Box was super uh, popular. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. Well, off. Off the rip, perfect example. Um, what is that? Um, the Velociraptor Priest. Oh, Velocipaster. Yeah. I mean, you you look at that poster. That poster is fucking sick. Yeah. Movie's dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> like movie you are shit. that somebody did their job. Yeah. Like and I think, I think they put more money into the poster. Oh yeah. That movie had a budget of three seventy five. Yeah, but that's a perfect example, one hundred percent. Like, Velocipaster looks fucking sick, and then that is not at all like that. The Velocipaster poster gives that like indie campy horror vibe. Yeah, just like a professional graphic designer just kind of gave that that vibe. But the movie's nowhere near that but like there's a there's a difference between like the independent horror cover vibe and then like what you would see hollywood would yeah like out. a mass release yeah yeah 
Um, I'm, I'm really curious as to what clown movie you're talking about now. Oh man, it was like it was like like Mr. Giggles or like well, there's Doctor Giggles and he's a doctor, yeah, and then there's Mr. Creep, but that's on Tubi. Clown. Uh, See, I mean, he's, a, he's kind of a clown, Mr. Creep. Uh, he's wrapped in um, medical gauze and just has his nose sticking out. Kind of like how Clown from Slipknot is. Yeah. I think it was like Stitches or something. Uh, Stitches has just his face on it. Yeah. What you're talking about is... Granted, this might be a long shot. Is the cult is it purple? Is it a purple flyer or a poster? Because it could be gags. If that's what you think of gags the clown. Gag? Dude, I tell me I just put in gags in Google and I was like, that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> Google said, how are we gonna go? Which road are we going Straight to? up. Um Ooh, no, it's not that. That poster's sick. Yeah, Gag's poster is dope. I wonder, I follow an artist on Instagram um, that does this style. That I think that it might be him. Uh, you might follow him. Um, I think it's like Sadist. Maybe it's not this guy. I'm trying to think of that. Yeah, no, uh, sadist art underscore designs. Um, he does art like that. Um, it actually might be him for sure. But anyway, yeah, that that's it. I haven't seen gags. Have you? I've seen it once. I don't really remember it. Um, yeah. it's fun though. Yeah, no, I haven't. I don't think I don't think I've seen. It. I I guess I can't find. I'm damn because I could name off like most clown movies. It was oh, was it? Because there's what obviously besides Pennywise, there's wrinkles, there's gags. There's Stitches. There's a clown from Haunt. There's the clown from Amusement. There's the clown from Eli Roth's Clown. There's a hundred tears with Gertie on it. There's Drive Through with Horny the clown on it. Uh, Clownado. Yes, of course. Both Terrifiers and um, All Hollows. Damn, I'm trying to think of which clown movie you're talking about now. It was some random red box movie. Um, I'm, I might be thinking of a different cover, though. I'm usually really good. Or maybe covers have changed. Because I want to say Mr. Jingles. Have you seen that? I definitely scrolled past it. It looks like they updated the cover because I recognize this clown. I just, I just remember it was like, Stitches or Jingles or something like that. I want to say it was Mr. Jingles because the cover looked, I mean, it looked good, but then the entire thing was like, it was shot on like a home video camera and somebody was just like, before the clown would show up, you would, you would just hear this random jingle and it's like, are you shitting me? Like, interesting. it was weird. Hmm. Huh. God, there's so many clown movies though so many so mine is actually really funny i don't know if you've seen it the movie is not good it's called demon wind it came out in 1990 demon wind yeah w-i-n-d and it has the green creature coming out of the window yeah no yeah it's not like that at all I, i've seen the artwork i haven't seen the movie though the, the movie it's definitely not like the worst thing I've ever seen. But you're just like, this artwork is too damn cool. And the these zombies kind of just like cool. You throw yeah. a little bit of makeup on them and they're just kind of walking in a field. Yeah, right? no, this would this would definitely be 
something that I would check out for sure. But now I won't. There you go. You should check <laughs> out um Mr. Creep though. I twos on Tubi. Okay. It's um pretty interesting. Uh basically like these uh kids break into this building, they find it's five or six colored um old I'm trying to remember what they're called, like the old big video cameras. They're the tapes that go in them. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they're colored, and then each one has a different, um, like different snuff film on it from the same person. And then, oh, and then the clown, Mister Creep, is getting interviewed about everything on those tapes. But then, as they're watching them, you're watching them. Okay, it's it's interesting. I give is it. It, it sounds similar. Is it um, kind of like the Poughkeepsie tapes? In a way, it shows the different tapes. Or, okay. Yeah, but it's cool. funny though because before he kills them, he like poses them, and mm. weird shit. There's like two eating at a table, and it's just like, okay, now throw up on the table. Okay, cool. There was, I think it was on. Um, I think it was on Hulu. It was. It was like a duo clown movie and they like they like it was like a travel um circus sort of vibe do you know what i'm talking about i don't but now i'm trying to think if so i definitely haven't seen it i'll tell you that much but i feel like Man. low budget there are so many clown movies so yeah which i i feel like um, that's what surprises me about Terrifier is, but it, it, it doesn't surprise me to a degree because it's a clown, but it's like, Hart's design is so unique. He's a mind. In fact, like, yeah, but it's like, typically what, when you typically, you see clowns, um, yeah. it's, Everybody does the same clown. Yep. It's like how, and I, that's what, I shouldn't have said, like, that. that's what surprises me because, like, and that, that's what's great about uh, Heart the Clown and Terrifier is, like, it's a clown, but it's a unique one. He's got, like, the witch's nose and, like, all, you know, it's like, it's not yep. the same clown. It's like, and then on top of, you know, you, you know, he's got, just shock horror that well it's great too because like obviously from the first terrifier he's black and white he's a he's a typical mime clown but blood looks really good on white yep and then obviously the laundromat scene from terrifier 2 where he's fucking washing it and he comes out all squeaky clean to do it again yeah that scene is incredible what, dude i had a, just Big old grin. I was like, I have never seen a serial killer slasher guy just go to the laundromat quick and just wash his clothes. Like, that's so funny. That, that that's so, the only that's one so funny. funny. Did it? It's not the same, but Patrick Bateman dropping off his sheets, one hundred percent. But that's it. That's the closest thing that I can think of for for sure. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, that's, it's, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's surprising to see a clown be so famous now, but like, I mean, it's just because of those little small things that they tweaked is because it's not the same clown. Cause I feel yeah, like he's definitely an, a horror icon already. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, I want to say, you, you know, the original Pennywise is very much like that's a clown, like, and I love what the new Pennywise did. They went to, you know that Renaissance looking thing, like that made yeah, it very you know, Victorian, super cool. Um, yeah. but most clowns is just like okay, it's just the same clown. Yeah. So you're not wrong. 
I, the only other... There aren't many clowns that stand out. Yeah. I guess... Um, See, that's what I like about Stitch is, though, he's got, like, Inspector Gadget arms, and he can... Oh, have you never seen Stitches? I don't... Boy! I guess not. not a fucking black... That movie is awesome. Like... There's literally. I, a guess, I thought I knew what you're talking about. Go go gadget arms. Yeah, he puts a balloon pump in the back of a kid's head and blows his head up like a balloon. But he I mean, has go go gadget arms. Like, there's a cult of clowns in it, where they're all like their livelihood is based on an egg in a shrine in a cemetery. Hmm. Please, yeah. No. Please watch it. You'll. you'll yeah, watch it. I'll. I'll definitely have to. And he's got a yeah, giant I, clown car with the um the big clown head on the spring on top, and he rides the little tricycle, and hmm. it's great. That no, movie's I'll still have to fun. Watch it. Cool. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, on, no, I'm stoked. Should be on most most things that sweet. Movies. Yeah, no, I'll um I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to do a thing next year um. I have like a new series on the channel. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm planning on doing like where I'm not going to rewatch like any of the classics. I'm just going to watch new shit. I tried to do that this year. So like I'm at like 350 something movies so far this year. There's very few rewatches of 2023 because that's what I intended to do was like, hey, I'm not going to watch the same movie twice yeah in the same year didn't work like that because sometimes you're just in the mood to watch a movie that you've already watched but it's like yeah. if i watched it in march who gives a shit if i watch it in december yeah like i watched black christmas earlier this year and i watched it yesterday yeah for so sure what? sue me <laughs> sue me <laughs> yeah like, what are you gonna do right but i mean it, it was definitely just like uh hey can i do this and then I blasted past it by 50 movies already. So, I don't know. I'm not going to watch as many movies next year, I don't think. Yeah. But it, it was just a self-challenge to see. Yeah, no, I did it a few years back. It wasn't... Um, I tried to watch uh, a new movie um, for... It's like... That I tried to watch like 100 new movies or... Like brand new ones, yeah. Um, that I've and that was wasn't hard. Of uh, course, not. wasn't hard whatsoever. So I I kind of figured it might be a cool um channel thing as well, where it's like, hey, I'm challenging myself to just watch everything new. Everything's new. Honestly, I think it'd be cool if I tried that for January. Obviously, not the same thing. I want to do a month. Where I watch a movie and just don't even read the synopsis. If it's new, I'm clicking on it. We're not yep. looking up the rating. We're not looking up the reviews. We're not looking up anything. We're just going to click it and then do a review on it and hope it's good. Yep. Because I found several that I think are great. I don't see many people, you know, talking about like recently. What? Tell them. You tell them. Huh? You tell everybody. What movies are those? Um, I want to say the most recent one, it was a while back, um, but I knew nothing about it. It's called the, it's called the Harbinger. I think I watched it. Did you really see that? Remember. I think there's a, I think there's an older movie with the same name. Okay. Or one that came out like two or three years prior. Um, but the Harbinger that I'm talking about, like the cover has that like, um, plague doctor vibe. Okay. Guy with the, yeah. Um, I went in that movie blind. Like, I li I literally saw the the cover artwork. I was like, "This is a new horror. Cool, sweet. Like, I'll just watch it." And I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, but maybe that's because I didn't know anything. Like, you kind of just have to take a chance on a random movie and hope it's yeah. Good. I mean, for but there are a bunch movie. of bad ones, but there's really good ones that slip under the radar because yeah. you just um, didn't happen to click on it. I still like. Um, I thought it was pretty solid. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can stumble upon random stuff like that. Just it, it's it's 
it's comforting to go to the ones that I always yeah f- of course I always do that I'm like I'm gonna watch something new and then I scroll past and I'm like oh yeah I'll watch Reanimator again sure yeah, yeah. Like, I'll watch it this again um and then the other night I was like I'm gonna watch something new and then it was like getting ready to leave the Texas Chainsaw my massacre. I was like, I guess yep. I'm watching this again. Like, I was yeah. like, all right, sounds good. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. That's, um. Did you ever watch Hyper, uh, Hypochondriac? It came yes. out in 2022. That was our first watch of this year. Really? And I was like, I didn't hear a single thing about this movie. Nope. And it would have made my list last year, but I watched it a few days prior. Hmm. But. Like Deadstream is the one for me that people sleep on. That's newer. It, I, man, I, I liked it. I don't want to say like, I loved it. I don't want to say like, I was like, oh my God. Um, but I, yeah, I don't see many people talk about that film. Um, I, I think that was the first. Um, first and only time that I've gotten hit up from somebody through TikTok where they're like, hey, you want to watch this before it comes out? And I was like, yeah. Hell yeah. Sick. 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 Um, and um, yeah, they absolutely nailed the whole campy YouTube shit. Like, Evil Dead's my favorite horror movie. It's Evil Dead meets yeah, Blair Witch like, with a YouTuber in it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some parts for me, I was like, this is a little ridiculous. Um, oh, you mean when he hits her with the chair and says, yeah. bitch? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we, like, me and Chandler rewatched it like a week and a half ago, and we went back to that part like five or six times so, in a row. I mean, it's it's honestly super good. Um, it's not it's not my favorite genre, but like That's for fair. what that movie, dude, it's so good. But it, it's, yeah. it's, bit, it's well aware of what it is. That's 100%. why it was able to push the limits. Same 100%. with Evil Dead 2. It was a horror That's, comedy. So Sam Raimi's like, we're, we're going to make it fucking wacky. Yep. That's what, but that's how it should be. I is agree. in my, in my opinion is if you're going to be a horror comedy, make it very apparent yeah, that this is supposed to be humor. Like you are not supposed to take this seriously. Yep. What happens is like you try to to tread that line, yep. sort of vibe, and that's where it gets weird. That's what I like, talk to people about. Um, Texas Chainsaw Two. Mm-hmm. Toby Hooper literally said it's a horror comedy. Technically, he said Texas Chainsaw Seventy Four is a dark comedy, which. A little bit harder to, to judge. Yeah, I don't necessarily think... It's I wouldn't classify the first one as a comedy whatsoever. because they're vastly different. Yeah. They're yeah. two completely different films. Well, my... I mean, they did the... Um, didn't they... Didn't they parody The Breakfast Club? Yeah, on the poster. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's like, that doesn't give it away, bro. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Bill Mosley scratches his head half the movie and is moaning at the fact that his metal plate feels good. Yep. Like that movie's over the top, but that's why I like it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's why, um, crabs, like it's not going to be for everybody. A hundred percent. Like a lot of people are going to watch this movie and go, what the fuck? I loved it. It sounds like it's for me. Oh, <laughs> I loved it. I am very it much. Oh, so, it was so good. And when I find it, I will definitely be doing a review for it. But the, yeah, yeah, and the the guy Pierce that that did the movie too. He's such a good guy. Love that. Um, there, you'll you'll see it. I was on. You'll see what I'm talking about. But I was like, "Yo, did you play? Did you happen to be a fan of Pokemon? Like growing up?" And he was like. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I'm just like, I was like, was this intentional? You know, sort of vibe. And he was like, "Mm, (laughs) you know, I was like, cool, sweet. Yeah. That's the kind of movie that that is. It's like, don't like, we're purposely trying to be funny. It's called Crabs. I can't go into that movie seriously at all. 
<laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's why I, I told him, I was like, the coloring. So I, I, why in the artwork, we really, we really pushed the pinks and the blues and like, yeah, it's not supposed to, do, don't buy this movie, you know, thinking um, it's going to be something else. Like, um, I've it's seen alternative covers for that m movie too. And yes, it's got the kaijus on it, but like the artwork makes it seem like more serious where I feel okay. like you're going to trick somebody for sure. Yeah. But like the artwork that I did with the director, um, it's very apparent of like, this is about to be goofy as fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Well, we are at an hour and a half. Cool. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. You can plug whatever you got coming up, um, whatever you're doing, hope to do. Um, obviously, plug all your socials, and uh, we'll get out of here. Cool. Sweet. Um, well, again, uh, I'm Justin Bryant. Um, I've got a TikTok channel. Um it's going to go through some changes here soon, but um, right now it's J Bryant 1126. Um, my Instagram for all my artwork and, you know, designs is 1126 art studio. Um, and then I have a, a store that you can buy the horror board game posters. Um, if you want, uh, it's on my store. It's 1126 art and then you'll find a slot for my store. So nice. And yeah. if you're in a band and y'all need tour flyers or shirt artwork or any of that, he does all that stuff too. I do. I'm a freelance graphic designer. So I pretty much do whatever. But yeah, I specialize in music art and uh, posters for sure. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, he's worked with motionless and white and i know y'all are suckers for that band i so. did so much for motionless and white this year man uh yeah. chris is a great dude um i haven't met him um okay. i i was outside the dressing room uh to meet him but they had a meeting that go that went uh, over and they had to get going and i had a, I had a big hour drive and stuff but yeah we've we've tried he's a great guy for sure that. yep yeah, because I'm good friends with Mike, who does all um, Einstein kills spread. Oh, my dude, Mike is great. Dude, he's been killing it. Like I met Mike in 2004, 2005, maybe, and he was doing artwork then. Oh, dude, he's done. He's done so much. Almost every band. Yeah, he's Almost done so much. A lot of, it's it's nice to see him gain popular. Larity, because I mean, Ice Nine and Motionless did the same thing for me, but like, yeah, bands now are starting to tag the artists that they work with, and that's yeah. so huge. It's so huge, yeah, because yeah. um, it used to not happen. So, no, not at all. I've done, I was just at the Kiss concert, I did 80% of the merch for their their last tour, which is crazy to it's even crazy. say, dude. I was like yay big like listening to kiss and i yeah i designed for their last tour most of the shirts were mine i'm like this is nuts um but it's just so funny because like nobody knows which i don't need them to know i don't need a True. sticker that says i didn't you know but um i was just in line with all these with all these people with all these these people like which one sh should i get I'm like well you should get this one because i designed that one and not that one just like yeah, 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 people, they're like, no, you didn't. Like, of course. if you, if you designed them, you'd be in some suite, and they're like, yeah, I fucking wish that that that'd be sick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> that'd be super sick. Um, but no, that's that's so crazy, especially on their last tour too. That's massive, dude. They're 70 some years old and they kicked that stage's ass. It was so fun. Dope. So I watched fun. one of the, the Thunder God clips from yesterday. Oh, cool. Yeah. Show, maybe. But yeah, that's just such a crazy thing to be like, yeah, I designed stuff for Kiss. I mean, now they're 
uh, a virtual band. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah, it's... yeah. I saw the mold for the heads yesterday, or the, yeah. not the mold, but the design work for the heads yesterday. It's like Very if cool. one band's did gonna you, pull it did off. Did you see dude. the the interview clip of them talking about it? Yeah. Yeah, Paul Stanley being like, "I can jump and it doesn't hurt now." So that's cool. <laughs> I know. I know. Dude, I will say by song two, Gene was just, dude, it was a, it was a river. I was like, brother, you, 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 you got to stop. Like, I mean, he, he did it all, but I was like, you're in shambles. But he's also sure. been doing that since the start of their career. So you know, got to give him credit for that. Career. Yeah. Yeah. But. All righty. Um, and with that, do you have any final thoughts, anything you'd like to say? Uh, not much, man. Just watch horror movies, support independent horror. Like, especially now, man, like, uh, you know, like Hollywood is just doing re remakes and they've got all these rights to these beloved franchises and you never know what's going to happen. So it's like, right. that's why I, that's why I back the, the terrifier franchise hard just because like of course these guys were on youtube and f like slewing and things and now they're just they're oh they're just as big yeah. and like that 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 only happens if people if people watch the movies and support so, agreed yeah i love that well justin it's been an honor thank you so much for chatting with me um, make sure to go follow him on all his socials, including his TikTok and his Instagram. Check, uh, go check out his store, buy his posters. Cause you know, you love them. He's seen the TikTok saying so, um, that's going to do it for us at welcome to creep camp. I've been Sean and, uh, we'll see you next time. See